All right, good morning, everybody. How's everyone doing today? Hope everyone can hear me. I am currently broadcasting. Good morning, Miles. Hope everybody had a nice weekend. Very good, Crazy Ivan. Thank you. Thank you, John. I'll just make a quick announcement while we're starting out here. So the markets have just opened next week, Tuesday and Thursday. We will not have a session. Our illustrious host, John, will not be available. So no session next week on the 17th and 19th of August. I will be here on Monday and Wednesday as usual. Just looking at what has occurred so far this morning. Let's take a quick look at crude oil. Yeah, looking like this nice trade here that's uh, off of that 200 moving average that you can see. We just started a little too soon. By the time the start time occurred, it was already past the entry. Then it got a little choppy there. Picking up this long trade off the 20 SMA, which was just the worst place to get in. Unfortunately, that move higher wasn't ready to continue and instead ended up going the opposite direction and a stop and reverse into the green trade at 32 got as low as 22 and would have stopped out then at money management so I mean the good news on that blue trade is the loss got cut by nearly 50 percent the second trade a break-even trade and then getting into the third trade which has hit its money management level not quite able to get to its target and then stopping out at 48. So maybe a little bit negative still for the session on crude oil. Long at 51, short at 32, that's like a 19 cent loss. And then picking up 42 to 48, it's only six cents. So definitely need a little work on that. There is a short now, and I would get below that moving average hate doing a three tick adjustment I think you need it get short at 30 making an adjustment from 33 down to 30 you could go to 29 if you want to really make a push through but it did just put punch through so that now is short right there and that's targeting 6612 or 66 and the stop is at 6661 nothing on the pound Aussie as of yet looking at unleaded gas that one did get long but you really had to anticipate that entry in advance it was pretty quick maybe hard to trade so then it puts you in the next trade, which just missed, looks like missed money management by a hair, 18, got as low as 20, quick stop and reverse, which stopped and reversed while it was in the profit, which then that one broke even, then a losing trade, it's a little dicey this morning, unleaded gas again, barely hitting, well it hit a target one there. So, still got work to do on that market. Catapult's been doing well. 
couple of nice messages this morning on our Trade Hacking Club Discord channel. A couple members kicking butt with Catapult posting their one and done sessions. If you haven't seen that, it's always nice to see. Good morning, MKG, Pamela. Nice to see you guys. And while I was showing you that, probably should have been paying attention to the YM. The YM got short for its first trade of the morning, hitting its first objective there. Target one for 37 points, target two now hitting target three. Anyone trading the YM with Spotlight should be quite happy hitting their, your goals on the very first trade, one and done. Now the stop is sitting at 35006. One of the trade plans I enjoy trading. This one here, the YM with Spotlight, does pretty darn well most of the time. Today you can see hitting that perfect target three there. The objective on this is target one. I mean, that's the minimum objective, but once you get up to more positions, you can go at, you know, take profit at target two, target three, which I think is in the end more productive than trailing because you don't really get the big runners that often during these morning, early morning sessions. But uh, you could also trail, of course, and it's still trailing 35. 006. The crude oil trade hit a money management again and then stopped out for break even again. So, I mean, that's four trades. A mini session really is meant for three. I would stop at this point with crude for whatever reason. It's just unable to hit its full target, keeps missing barely. Unfortunately, it was that early trade was the trade to be in. It just started too soon, and the entry was already in the rearview mirror at the start time. So it is what it is. And then look at this chart. Looking awfully toppy up in here this morning, but pretty crappy. Breaking out to a new high over here. Failing to get higher could often set up a strong move in the opposite direction. So now that it's come up and made a lower high, it is possible if we get a short setup, it could do well, but this market seems to be range bound at the moment, and you can see there's a long setup. So if you're trading the mini session, you just got to stick to the, the plan, I think, and maybe wait until the 10 a.m. new mini session. And the YM's finished. So the YM stopping out at 986. Wow, that really jumped down quickly barely missing target four All right, I see that the broadcast stopped. I'm not sure why. Let me just reconnect it. No accounting for the ghosts in the machine that pop up from time to time with internet technology. Didn't do anything different. Let's just see what happens here. Hopefully you guys can see what's going on. I don't know where you missed the video. Just want to say uh, good morning to Claude, Armando, Len. Nice to see you guys, Ron. So, um, yeah, I, I just reset it, so that's good. I don't know <laughs> when it went dark when I when, as I was talking, but there you can see. Boy, it almost looks like Mount Everest, doesn't it? Okay, I'm being weird now. 
that's a short that's the one and done trade on the YM you could see it almost getting all the way to target for it just barely missed so that was the trade that just I was just talking about not sure if you saw it morning Roger but the YM's done one and done getting its job done crude oil as we were as I was saying broke to new highs over here these are very bearish bars that will often set up a strong move in the opposite direction which has not occurred we got a short trade it didn't quite get to target one got to break even stopped out so far pretty range bound and, and kind of dicey price action now it's in a long trade again but the mini sessions done I mean really there's three trades total I showed you a fourth except for it was dark but you can see the support and resistance lines getting broke above and below kind of expanding range and then back into the middle crude oil is kind of crappy at the moment and the mini sessions done and there's a good reason why we limit it to three trades I just I did talk about this fourth trade here so wait until the next mini session if that's what you're doing with this chart of course there's all kinds of ways to trade but the mini sessions will keep you out of trouble. Just looking at some catapult. So this is one of the plans on catapult. I forget the start time on this. 8.45, I have to check. Yeah, a little dicey there to start couple losing trades but you have to be super fast to get them it's possible you just totally miss them which would be okay and then two winners in a row just scalp targets catapult kind of works like this you know sometimes you have to throw the hook in the water but you can see the price action on unleaded is kind of the same as what we saw in crude oil to start the session this morning kind of choppy and range bound but what have we learned about markets that start choppy and range bound typically a little bit later in the morning it breaks out of the range and opens up and you get some pretty good size trades so that's the beauty of the mini session because it often allows you to catch them want to take a look at the soybeans with counterpunch I mean right out the gate not that you have enough time to grab that probably not that happened all within a blink of an eye and too fast to even anticipate really if you're anticipating the range and the setup because that's a tricky one the setup bar is actually here this happened too fast but then that's why we use these additional supplemental trades because that then becomes the first trade of the day plenty of time to grab that and that hits its goals targets one and two almost target three when it gets to target one you can just borrow the white trailer that becomes the correct trailer and that one picks up nine ticks it's two and three quarter points 15 ticks, three and three quarter points, $50 a point, just like the ES, soybeans with counterpunch trader, one and done. That one's finished. And that one fits the backpack trader style, doesn't it? Because by the time it hits target two, oh my God, you had to trade for an eternity. Almost four entire minutes. oops four minutes one and done that's why people love trading grains especially soybeans with counterpunch all right any questions about what's happened so far the pound Aussie is like the race of the glaciers barely moving it's just nothing to do on that one yet and crude oil and the you know crude oil is just range bound 
Same with unleaded gas. Kind of a crappy start. Maybe the markets finally realize we're in the dog days of August. I think it kind of missed the memo so far this month. Good for us. Uh, Smartcore asking if the mini sessions are defined somewhere. Uh, on Spotlight Power Trader, that's where it really became vogue. I gotta change my mic settings. Hold on, let me know. I just clicked on a button. Did that change the way I sound? I wish I could like hear myself so I know, but hopefully now it sounds a little better. Please let me know. Um, Smartcore mini session is a way to have your cake and eat it too. Basically, you take the concepts of a trade plan. It also makes, well, first of all, it makes for great testing. Like you could fast test different mini sessions. But the idea of a mini session, uh, thanks, <laughs> thanks, MKG. Um, I don't know if it sounded different when I clicked the button or if it just sounds the same. Oh, less background noise. Yeah, because when I log into my streaming video, there's this optimize for music button and it's always checked. And I always uncheck it, but I just forgot. So I just unchecked it now and I'm just curious how that changed the sound. But anyway, you guys can hear me. Um, the mini session really is a way to have your cake and eat it too. It's like a cookie cutter where you have a a well-defined trade plan with a start time and a stop time and a very tight set of trade plan goals. So take the eight tick crude oil chart, for example, with Spotlight. I've talked about a 9 a.m. mini session, a 10 a.m. mini session. You don't do the 10 a.m. mini session on days where you have a crude oil report at 1030. On Wednesday, that becomes your mini session an 11 a.m. mini session, maybe one later in the day. But the idea is, is that you take X amount of trades to hit your goal. Hopefully you're hitting it with the first trade. Usually it's three total trades, but you could certainly opt to add a fourth or fifth if your testing shows it's necessary and it helps. But the idea is you hit your goal and you're done, all right? Power of quitting. So hopefully a 9 a.m. mini session, first trade out the gate, hit your target one minimum trade or whatever you've tested as your minimum trade, power of quitting done. But you have more trade in you, you wanna trade more. You don't just keep trading because that's how you give the money back to the market, right? There's a random distribution of win wins and losses. Just take for example, if this nice winner here happened one minute later, so that when the mini session started, you're able to grab it, you'd be one and done, and then who, you don't wanna deal with the rest of this garbage price action afterwards, you wanna sit that out. That didn't happen today, but just for example, that's the beauty of the mini session. You get your one and done, you're finished, but you still wanna trade more. Well, you have another mini session starting at 10 a.m. I mean, anytime really, you could just fast test and use your UTA and build your trade plan the way I always teach, but the point is, you treat that second mini session separate. Like it has nothing to do with the first mini session. It's a brand new session with brand new goals. So like this, you can have multiple trade plans, but still take advantage of the less is more idea. Trade less, make more. Create a trade plan with a statistical advantage or edge, which is how you make money in the markets, right? And you can multiply it, use it as a cookie cutter and trade as much as you want, as often as you want, but using the concept with our power of quitting approach, you hit your goals, it empowers you to stop trading. Not just for the day, but for that trade plan, right? So that's where the mini session is very useful. And it just is a matter of, you could also isolate maybe the best windows of time throughout the day. So if you're using the UTA spreadsheet, which I hope you are, that has a time of day uh, study, you could create pockets of time and really determine where the most productive times are. 
I mean, obviously, you got to put the data in to get the data out. But let's say you want to trade from 9 a.m. to noon and you're very comfortable with three hours of trading. Right. So you might want to look for two or three pockets of time that are just going to give you really tight, concise trade plans where you can prove you're going to win most of the time with minimal trading. So that's the idea of the mini session. Yeah, John, I don't know. It's probably a default setting I got to look into. It's just one of those things that I'm sure. It says, check the setting for high fidelity capture unchecked to op optimize for speech. So I had it checked, and it's always checked, and I always have to uncheck. It's probably just some default setting or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, SmartCore, really great question. Hope that's clear. Let me know if you have any additional follow-ups to that idea. Uh, <laughs> like I'm on an exercise. Does it still sound like I'm on an exercise machine? Maybe, maybe unchecking that little box eliminates some of that sound. I mean, I have the cardioid setting on my mic so it should be directional right to my voice all right good well that's good to know that's interesting information but whenever i do the treadmill i walk on i mean whenever i do the trade room i walk on a treadmill i have my stand-up desk behind my sit-down desk and uh you know sitting's a new smoking right or at least it was a few years ago i don't think it's changed I've already walked 2,100 steps. I just set it to a comfortable 2.4 miles per hour. Thank you, Smart Core. Appreciate that. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So just sticking to the mini session spirit, we are about inside of seven minutes before our 10 a.m. start time for the mini session on crude and that we use this eight tick momentum bar which you can see sticking with our three total trades kind of saved our bacon here because the chart is just awful this is the kind of charts nightmares are made of although it looks terrible but most of these trades actually worked out i mean there was that one loser that came in right here to start the session and then a break even and a break even and with three trades total you really should be done I pointed out the next trade, which was also a break even, right? So then you're done, and that saves you from a loser. And then another trade that finally hits a winner, but you'd still be behind on the session. So, you know, the mini session is one of those things where you try to hit your goals, taking what the market wants to give you, quitting your session positive most of the time, while controlling your drawdowns with minimal and efficient trading. 
And that's the beauty of the mini session also, because you can win most of the time and then have a large drawdown day and take all those winnings away, right? Whereas when you have a market that's just garbage, you use your mini session approach and the rules and your maximum trading, and it keeps you out of harm's way. Like you don't just keep throwing money when the market just doesn't want to cooperate. So, you know, part of, of winning is not losing. And when we talk about not losing, we talk about smart and efficient trading and controlling your drawdown. And the mini session kind of solves that with just really simple rules to follow. And with those simple rules, it's easy to test and prove to yourself so that when a session like this happens, you're not just throwing the baby out with the bathwater and then chasing the next hot thing. You have a great trade plan, but some sessions are gonna lose. You wanna be able to quit with a positive, profitable result a vast majority of the time, like in the mid 70 or higher percent of the time. Figure you're gonna break even maybe three to 6% of the time, and you're gonna lose 15 to 18, maybe 20% of your sessions. But that's still more than three steps forward, one step back. It's more like three and a half steps forward or close to four steps forward, one step back, right? That's how you grow your account. Of course, you gotta still prove it out with your UTA work so that you could really keep an eye on your profit factor and average net profit per trade and win rates and all that. But with the fast test, you can at least prove you can quit a vast majority of your sessions with a positive result and control your drawdown with minimal and efficient trading. Both sides of that formula are what make this work. So let's analyze what's going on here at the right edge of the chart. We're still waiting another three and a half or so minutes for the 10 a.m. mini session to start, but we do have an active trade that got short at 66.27. Right at the start of our mini session, we can get in sync with this trade if there isn't a newer trade, if we haven't already hit a money management level, or if we haven't stopped out yet. So it's very likely, or I don't know if it's likely, but it's possible and probable that in another couple minutes, you'll get in sync with that short trade there, that could be the first trade of your 10 a.m. mini session. Is the market done with range bound garbage price action? I don't know. Nobody knows that. All we know is that we got the first trade of the session and it may be a long trade and we have a trade plan with rules. That's all we know. Remember, you wanna focus on what you can control and surrender, one of the 12 powers to successful trading, surrender to what you cannot control. We don't know what the price action will do. We have no control over that. We do have control over our trade setup as part of our trade plan, and what that trade may be at the time we're supposed to take it, right? So you focus on what you can control. That's the basis. It's one of the 12 powers and fundamental to succeeding. If you try to control what you can't control, that's just like saying, let's punch a hole through that wall with our head. A battle you'll most likely lose most of the time. If anyone's interested, by the way, it's a Lifespan 1200. It's a really great treadmill. You put it under your desk. It's got this little remote that sits on top of your desk. You could set it to a comfortable walking pace and you could just work like that. And it'll, eventually you just forget. You forget you're walking. Next thing you know, you look down 10,000 steps. Calories burned. You could have been sitting, doing nothing. All right, so that short trade, now normally we would have a stop and reverse adjustment and the entry on the long trade would be 36, but that's only if we're gonna protect the trade we're already in. We're not in that trade, so we don't use a stop and reverse adjustment. But it already hit 30, well, I was gonna say, if it stayed at 36, we'd put our entry in at 37. Now you got a hard choice if you wanna put your entry in at 39 to prove it can go higher 
that's a three tick adjustment which kind of sucks on the other hand the price action sucks so you don't want to get in here at 36 if it can't get past that high of that bar that it just formed let's see what happens it's still not quite 10 at least not according to my clock um, could be a little off but my clock shows another 20 seconds but it looks like that mini session is going to give a long trade now now you just you, you got to grab it at 66 it comes down and gives it to you I don't know if you want to make a four tick adjustment I don't like doing that it messes up the money management and it also implies somebody who's afraid of the trade that's not good so it did just trigger in it's 10 a.m. it's long at 36 it's targeting 51 that's the primary objective and the money management's at 49 which means if it gets there you move your stop to break even plus one tick so the first trade of the 10 a.m. mini session all right so hopefully it works it has been coming up and making lower highs you can see and it is down you know almost two dollars it is down two dollars today it's all the way down to 66 so certainly trending lower throughout the day so far we look at what's gone on it's kind of been up and down but you could see it has been trending down since Friday and you know you can look even further back but it did stage a bit of a comeback and then kind of stopped right up in here this morning oops wrong button it's just kind of crude oil trying to figure stuff out here but not the friendliest of sessions this morning yeah so peloton obviously makes good products too i'm not familiar with that particular one len but it's good that you love it and that hopefully you're using it and like i got my sit down desk i use that too but the stand-up desk is uh it's nice i mean i don't even notice i'm walking ron has one right on the workout equipment sales guy i should get an affiliate link all right so who's ever in this trade good luck to you keep an eye on it it did fail to make those new highs and it looks like it's trying to drift lower Pound Aussie winning the race of the glaciers. Moving at breakneck speed. Yeah, not not a not the most wonderful of sessions to write home about this morning. Except for the Dowie Mini, one and done, soybeans one and done. The energies are a little bit in a malaise this morning to start the week. Looks like spotlight is close to stopping out there on that crude trade and it did so spotlight stopping out it's going off to be bearish look at what the market's been since starting the johnny come lately trade which unfortunate and then this garbage price action so it's testing with 200 moving average on this chart all right well we have a lot more people in the room please remember to hit the like button it really helps us my goal is to get to a thousand subscribers we're really close i could probably throw a rock and hit that thousandth subscriber on the head whoever that is 
Um, we're so close. We only need a few more. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Then you get notified when we go live. We've got some spontaneous sessions. Uh, they're in the works. Probably just, you know, an announcement will go out and 10 minutes later we'll be live. So if you're not subscribed, you'll miss it. That'll happen. A few announcements next week. Tuesday and Thursday, the 17th and the 19th. John is going to be uh, traveling and won't be available. So no trade sessions next week on Tuesday and Thursday. I'll be here Monday and Wednesday next week. So only two sessions next week in the crude oil report, of course. Uh, Mark, uh, was HO one and done? I, uh, I don't know. I don't have, uh, you know, that's the thing is I only could open so much because if I try to do too much, then things start to crash. So I guess it just depends on this, on the trade plan. And I don't really have the workspace updated on this computer. Uh, but if it, okay, so it was <laughs> nice. I believe you. Mark says heating oil is one and done at nine 30. I, I could try to show it. Um, what trade plan was that? I need to, I need to get, well, I know, but I have more than one. <laughs> I know it's mine. I've done some work on the trade plans and uh, what I've posted on the member site. So um, on this computer, I haven't updated the workspace with, with those trade plans, but let me ask you this, was it by chance trade plan version 1C. If you open up your calculator, you could look at the top line and get the name of the trade plan. I think, was it 1C? I mean, I see 1C being one and done. I'm looking at it right now. So maybe that was it. I have different versions because I just track different things and um, I could show you if I can grab this one actually have it here. Let me just double check and see if this is the one. I mean, this one wins like 75% over the last 659 trades. It's pretty impressive. We'll just look at this one. I don't know if this is the one you're referring to. It's a good one though. 1D. Let me see if I could find that one too. I might have it on this computer, but here's version 1C, I think. Is that what I said? I've got the automation running here, and, and the this is the one. This is right at 931, so it's basically the same time you said. And you can see, talk about getting it done quickly. I mean, Plenty of time to get into the trade, it comes all the way down and hits a target three for one and done. And uh, is it, let me just see. I mean, you have so many options on what targets to go for, but there is a basic plan for positions. And this one is a target three and a trailer. So you have your scalp position and your runner position, two positions. And it's so robust that this plan actually lets you trade a power of quitting six. You could take six total trades or four losses, whichever happens first. And in so doing, you literally are winning close to 75% of the time on trades. On sessions, we could look and see. Um, actually, let's do that because I don't even know the answer. So I could pull up the performance report. This is coming up this month. We're going to do a, a boot camp on the trade assist automation. You can see trading six total trades or four losses, whichever happens first, dating back to April 4th, which is a long time in day trading, making new equity highs today. That's impressive, I think. And the performance report, it almost gives you $50 average net profit per trade on a on a tick value that's more than half i mean less than half of a crude oil tick so that's significant 
with well-balanced longs and shorts. So up and down. I mean, look at, I mean, you don't see this very often, just the parity where it doesn't matter if you're going long or up or down. And you can see the average net profit per trade. Every time you place a trade, 47 bucks goes in the bank, in, in the, the account, because that's net of all wins and losses. Getting this kind of information really helps you figure out what you want to focus on. This is pretty robust. I mean, this just keeps doing, I, I created this trade plan months ago and it's got this rolling look back. I think it's a 90 or hundred day look back. So to, today it looks back that amount of days, whatever the limit is that you get for range bars. I mean, you can't, yeah, it's 90. 90 day rolling look back, rolling meaning 90 days from the current session, and it continues to hit new equity highs. So it's pretty darn good. It is winning 75% of the time. So if we look at the periodic returns, we can put it on a weekly subtotal type of thing, and we could see the weekly totals. And if you look at April 4th to today, there's a break even. There's your three losing sessions. <laughs> Ironically, today is still negative because it's not finished. You might have had a couple losses or a loss or whatever, but today's still going. But don't count today yet. It's still going. And you can see that when I say quit your session with a positive result a vast majority of the time while controlling your drawdown with minimal and efficient trading, you could open up a report like this and literally, literally see that it did accomplish that. It quit its sessions most of the time positive. It only had three losing sessions, one break-even session, the rest winners. And that hits the mark. Two positions, John, targets three and trail. Pretty standard stuff. You can go for a target three and a target four. If you have the trade assist, you can discover what those positions produce with a click of the button. You can work on other power of quitting goals. Maybe you don't want to take six trades. What are some other power of quitting formulas? With a click of the button, you can discover stuff like that. The trade assist is very powerful, especially with something like Catapult, because it's pretty easy. You're, you only have one setup. You're not trying to mix and match and figure out this setup versus that setup or this combo of setups versus that combo of setups or whatever. You got one setup, and it's making it so easy. Well, nothing's easy, so take that, take that with a grain of salt, but easier when compared to other strategies to create something good and everlasting. I mean, everlasting also, that story is still being written. Nothing's guaranteed in trading. Only guarantee is death and taxes, as we know. And there are flaws with the automation. The automation thinks this trade lost, but it really, you know, if you're trading it, you would have stopped out at break even, provided you could have moved your stop fast enough, which you, you should have been able to. But the point is, is that automation is based on the close of the bar. So it doesn't assume that that stop moved until the bar closed. So automation has flaws. Doesn't matter. It's, you know, it's the best. Is, you, you, nothing, nothing's perfect in trading. You get flaws no matter what. So there's what the automation tells you. And then there's what you do live as a trader. And that's where the UTA spreadsheet comes in and the 25 practice trades in a row without a mistake and continuing to track your progress as you go, that's how you build a successful business of trading. You can't just rely on one tool. You have to take what this tool gives you, what that tool gives you, and then combine until you figure it out. You know, you, you, you have to figure out what it really means to trade live also. Duh. So use a SIM account to practice, use your UTA spreadsheet to really, really learn 
what you need, how things really happen. And the UTA spreadsheet has its flaws also. So it's just a matter of using the tools for what they're intended to do and being Sherlock Holmes to figure out the pieces of information that come together and form a winning, enduring trading program for yourself, the CEO of your trading business, which is what you need to do if you want to succeed. And these are all great tools. doesn't matter. Spotlight's proven. Works great. Uh, Counterpunch, we all know. And now Catapult, the new kid on the block, kind of asserting itself in many wonderful ways for a lot of you. If you saw on the Trade Hacking Club thread this morning on our channel, a couple people here in the room posting how well they did with Catapult, one and done, following a trade plan, hitting their goals. I'm proud of you guys. I mean, that's how you do it. That's getting it done. That's the whole point. I would only encourage you, and maybe you've done this, but don't just follow the plans with blind faith. Do your own foundational work so that you can believe and understand what happens and how it works because you can get real crappy price action like this and that can really throw you for a loop. By the way, the second trade on the mini session, a big winner, and let, you know, depending on how many positions you're trading, probably not enough. You're only trading one position that first trade unfortunately was a bit larger lost 23 cents and the first target on the yellow trade you would have skipped target one because it's too small target two is only 12 so you would have made back half your money unless you're trading more yeah. positions you know it would have stopped that here and maybe you'd be still a little bit negative on the day but coming back Definitely staging a comeback. And in mini style, in mini session style, you still get one more trade to see if you can get positive. Right? So you have a loser, a winner, which is smaller, and one more trade if you're trading the three tick limit. I mean the three trade limit, not the three tick limit. The three trade limit. On heating oil, we we're just looking at, could you do mini sessions on heating oil? Heck yeah. I mean, heating, and, and also you don't have to do six full trades like I said. I mean, one and done might be all you want to do. And in which case, the first trade wins. But if we were to look at the, this trade plan, and remember, this trade plan is target three and a trailer, six total trades, or four losses, whichever happens first. That is the power of quitting plan. It's, it's not a one and done type thing. It could be, but the plan that I put up started with more trades because then you can kind of work backwards from there and trade less if you want to. But trading the six with the four losses in a row is produced, you know, I showed you what it produced. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. So the first trade wins, second trade breaks even, third trade loses, pops through, support right in here. That's just a losing trade. It's what it looks like. Then the fourth trade wins. So winner, break even, loser, winner. I mean, if you want to stop there, it's pretty good. Maybe better off just stopping with the first trade still, but what regardless, we still have two more trades or one loser, whichever happens first, right? So then the next trade is a break even. And the next trade is a break even, even though it shows a loss. I just showed you why, because the automation waits for the bar to close and it assumed that it closed below the stop. So it automatically takes you out then on the open of the next bar. But in reality, if you're trading it, you're moving your stop to break even intra bar unless your testing shows you shouldn't do that. So another break even. So really one losing trade, two winners, and three break evens for a six trade session. Right on, Jay Bird. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. And then if you're going to do another mini session, 
maybe this trade counts as part of the mini session, even though it's a sixth trade in the earlier trade plan I put out. But let's just say you're trying to do uh, mini sessions with a different power of quitting idea. If you hit your goals at the first trade, you're done. Well, this one didn't hit its goals. It broke even. So then you have to take another trade to say, say 10 a.m. mini session. You get the next trade and that's a big winner. And these scalp targets are pretty accurate, wouldn't you say? I mean, that's all you're really hitting on the winners. This one got to target four. And so there's a, a break even and a winner and a 10 a.m. mini session would be one and done. You see, just by quickly using your eyeballs and your brain and clicking through charts, you can easily use these tools to create the right trade plan for yourself. Now, today is just a random day. You want to do this exercise with 100 sessions because then your statistics start to normalize and you can start to rely on them, right? So just think of today as just any old random session, but you want to go back and fast test, not with the continuous chart, but with the actual contract chart. But let's say you still want to trade more. You want two winners and a positive result to quit the session because there's so many trades, you're only seven minutes in and this is a robust strategy and then you get another trade and that one is also a winner and it's still going and this is the beauty of the scalp and run. You're gonna hit the runners at some point. This one picks off the scalp target three and now the second position is trailing the purple line and still going. It just passed its target four so the runner very productive so far, and who knows how far down this can go. Again, you know, it's a matter of just thinking through your own personal situation, what you can envision yourself doing. The mini session helps keep you disciplined, helps keep you from over trading, and it gives you the opportunity of taking advantage of strong moves that happen, especially if early in the session you're choppy and range bound. Because after, what, I don't even know how many years. I keep saying 18, but I'm really just kind of guessing. I stopped counting after 15, and I got Kelly Bundy syndrome. But a long time calling trades. One of the things that just continues to repeat itself over and over on all markets is that if the session starts crappy, you can look forward to some really great trades a bit later. And we're kind of seeing that with heating oil at the moment, even though it wasn't crappy. But look at unleaded. Unleaded was kind of crappy. There's a scalp and run that's knocking the ball out of the park right there. And let's take a look at crude oil. Crude oil is also heading lower. I mean, remember what I said, if it fake break out to the upside, you could see early on in this we had that strong move up, just missed it a minute before our start time, got caught up in this whipsaw crap, broke out three times to new highs based on this swing high, tried to get higher, failed, started putting in lower highs as it kept attempting to get higher, it kept failing worse and worse. The failure to break out to new highs, the fake Breakout, in other words, will often lead to a strong move in the opposite direction. And, and there's just been a lot of support. And it was, it, you know, the strong move in the opposite direction didn't happen until, you know, finally some cap capitulation here as the 50 moving average is pushing lower to meet with that 200. And you could see it. That's where I come up with that follow the yellow brick road idea. And, you know, I wouldn't call that as strong a move as what we see sometimes. It's it's more of a dogfight. But certainly the sellers are in charge at this point in time. And you have a nice reaction into the blue line and a new short trade. But it's hard to say because the buyers are definitely fighting every inch of the way, so to speak. But that this is your third trade of the mini session, right? Remember we had three trades? So that's short from 65, 64. Target one is 65, 56. It's too small. You have to get at least 10 ticks on a target with this plan. So you're going to go to target two. 
6550. 50 being a pretty strong support level, a psychological number. It's a good place for a target two, a first target for this setup. Hopefully there's some magnetism and the 50 pulls the price down to test that level. We'll see. But there is a stop also at, of course, at 65.82. And there's also been some action moves, reaction, action, reaction, action. Re this is getting late, you know, a little long in the tooth, this, this short move down. And just like we saw the dark blue trade failing on the move up, there may not be enough to push this lower. But that is the next trade, and you don't want to second guess, and you don't want to trade afraid. It could win. It could lose. It will do both. It just depends on what the outcome will be. But if you're committed to the trade plan, that's the trade you take. It's the next trade. It has to go through target one and go 10 ticks for money management to be able to move your stop to break even. There's a tiny little dot that marks it. It's dark blue. I'm sure you can't see it. So I'll just drop a horizontal line. If it gets to 54, then you're out of no man's land and you could get to break even. So that's the first objective is get to break even. I know dark blue is probably the worst color imaginable for broadcasting and doing a trade room on YouTube. All right, guys, again, if you don't mind, if you haven't done so, hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. We're so close to 1,000 subscribers. Really need that. And again, an announcement regarding next week. We will be dark on Tuesday and Thursday. John will be traveling. John is his own version of the backpack trader. Yeah, you can see not a, not enough uh, seller power to get short. Still surviving, but stabbing up to 81. The stop's at 82. Let's see if we can get a push lower here. I, if I had to guess, I would say this trade is going to stop out, but I'm trying to reverse jinx it. I have no control, as the, nor does anyone else. But we've seen trades that where the stop holds by one tick and it ends up succeeding. There's a reason we use bracket orders. There's a reason we have our stops and targets attached to one another when we place the trade. When this trade gets filled at the entry, you should have handles already in place with OCOs where the target is attached to the stop. So when one gets hit, the other one automatically cancels. And there's nothing for you to do. But we have life. This trade can go either way. It's worked its way back to the entry. The stop did hold, and right now the price doesn't know if it wants to test lower or start inching higher. Anything could happen. So that's up in the upper middle part of the broadcast here of, of what I'm broadcasting. You can see heating oil or... Um, Heating oil stopped out with its runner way down here on that short trade, short from 285 and hitting uh, 216 for a nice runner if that were a mini session. And unleaded still going, unleaded <laughs> a larger runner from 2036, and now the stop is down at 1. Nine three eight. Quick scalp target at target three and or four, and then the runner. Looking like it's an inch or so away from hitting its stop, but a very successful runner. Crude oil still surviving. You have a stop and reverse. And that's kind of tricky because you want to go two ticks above the entry to 78, and it hits 78. So like it or not, 78 
is where that trade would be taken out if you were unable to get that in there and you're still short you're lucky you could put your stop at 79 and try to stay short but in essence the short failed and it's over the mini sessions over not a winning mini session with the three trades now you could be thinking the failure to get lower breaking out to support and failing to follow through could lead to a strong move in the opposite direction but we just know that the price action has been really dicey all morning so usually the trade plan works in mysterious ways and the rules of your tested trade plan that you've proven to yourself will work better than any discretionary decisions you make which are untested you might get lucky but the end result of making lucky discretionary decisions that stray from a trade plan you've tested and proven to yourself the end result is that you end up straying further and further away from your trade plan until you don't have one anymore and that's a slippery slope that usually doesn't work out even if a discretionary decision wins today the long-term harm is usually greater and I'd rather see you just take your lumps, take your losing session, and stick to your trade plan if you've truly done the work to prove it to yourself first. And if you haven't, then it doesn't matter what you do and it doesn't matter what I tell you. So I think I'm pretty much done Let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully you enjoyed the session. I think it was productive. Hit on some themes that I hope were helpful for you guys. I'll be back on Wednesday. John will be here tomorrow. Of course, Wednesday we'll do the crude oil report as we usually do. But I'm done. So I'll wait a moment, see if there's any questions. And if not, I'm going to say goodbye to you guys. Unleaded just stopped out and finished. Sure thing, Lan. Wait another moment because I know there's a little bit of a delay. All right, then. Everyone have a wonderful day. See you guys on Wednesday.